LA 5 Weekend Morning News. Breaking now on the KTLA Morning News at 9, the U.S. Supreme Court has wrapped up the latest term with rulings on two major cases, including President Biden's student loan forgiveness program. Lots of uncollected uh, luggage and long lines at LAX this morning following days of flight delays and cancellations this week as airports around the nation welcome a rush of holiday travelers. And if you're hitting the road for your holiday destination, you'll be happy to know that gas prices are significantly cheaper than this time last year. All right, here we go. Just about getting into the weekend. We're only a couple of hours away, and a lot of people making it an extremely long weekend. Still very overcast at the uh, beaches, and that's the way it's going to remain for the better part of this morning, even into this afternoon. Coastal 73, 79, uh, downtown San Fernando Valley at the moment, 66 with a high of 98 degrees. 85, Orange County Inland, Inland Empire 100, 106 in the high desert. Jessica, back to you. Mark, thank you. Breaking news this morning. The Supreme Court has concluded its term by issuing two major decisions. It has struck down President Biden's student loan forgiveness plan and ruled in favor of a Colorado woman who refused service to same-sex clients. KTLA's Trevor Shirley live for us in Washington, D.C. now with more. Trevor, good morning. Jess, good morning to you as well. You're right, the Supreme Court saving two of its biggest decisions for the final day of its term, including that final ruling on the legality of President Joe Biden's student loan forgiveness program. In a 6-3 ruling, the court struck down President Joe Biden's student loan forgiveness program. The decision came down along the court's ideological lines. That means the White House can no longer pursue its efforts to forgive federal student loan debt. The program would have forgiven up to $10,000 per individual borrower and was estimated that effort would have cost the country around $400 billion. Several states had sued over the program, and with this decision, the court decided the president does not have the authority to forgive that kind of federal debt under his pandemic emergency powers. In a second closely watched case, the court ruled 6-3 to three that a Colorado website designer cannot be forced to make a wedding website for a same-sex couple if doing so violates her religious beliefs. At issue was a Colorado state public accommodations law. The designer said she shouldn't be forced to accommodate designing for a wedding that did not align with her religious beliefs. The court agreed with her in a first-of-its-kind ruling. Justice Gorsuch, writing for the majority, said, quote, Colorado seeks to force an individual to speak in ways that align with its views, but defy her conscience about a matter of major significance. While Justice Sotomayor, in her dissent, wrote, quote, Today, the court, for the first time in its history, grants a business open to the public a constitutional right to refuse to serve members of a protected class. Now, in all likelihood, we will uh, expect to hear some kind of remarks from President Biden on this uh, student uh, debt program forgiveness uh, ruling. We're not sure when exactly that will happen, but in all likelihood, we will be hearing from the president. In the meantime, the court's work for this term is done. The justices are again expected to hear uh, more cases later on this year. That's the latest from Washington. We're live at the Supreme Court. We'll send it back to you guys in L.A. Trevor, thank you for that. New at 9, a man wanted in connection with the January 6th riot at the U.S. Capitol has been arrested with weapons and bomb-making materials near former President Barack Obama's uh, home in Washington. The Secret Service tells the Associated Press that agents spotted 37-year-old Taylor Toronto just a few blocks away from the Obama household. They say he evaded agents but was eventually arrested by D.C. police who say he had weapons and materials to make an explosive device. The Secret Service says Toronto had also made social media threats against a public figure. They did not say who. Police arrested him on charges of being a fugitive from justice. Airlines, <clears throat> excuse me, playing catch up following days of flight delays and cancellations. This as 4th of July holiday travel ramps up at airports nationwide.
Hi, good morning, Jess. We spoke with one woman whose daughter was trying to get back to L.A. by Tuesday. She just got here today, and her bags ended up in Orange County. And you can see here at Terminal 7, we're at Terminal 7 United. Uh, there are about a 1,000 bags, I'm told, by one employee. And he says these bags are unclaimed right now because of these delays and cancellations due to severe weather across the country. Now, as of this morning, here at LAX, there are more than 90 delays and 11 cancellations. Nationwide, we are seeing more than 320 cancellations and more than 1,800 delays, according to flightaware.com. Now, if your flight is canceled for any reason, you are legally entitled to a full refund. You don't have to accept a rebooking or a voucher. Major carriers will also rebook passengers on the same airline at no additional cost for significant delays and will cover meals if the delay is three hours or more. Now, as for how busy it's going to be, well, here at LAX, officials are expecting nearly 3 million passengers this holiday period, which started this past Wednesday and will go through Monday, July 10th. Today and July 10th are expected to be the two busiest days. Now, officials also believe there will be uh, this will be the busiest the airport has been since early 2020, with July set to be the busiest month of the summer travel season. The Auto Club of Southern California says that a near record 3.4 million Southern Californians will be traveling this holiday period. About 2.7 million will hit the roads. Around 517,000 will fly, and around 253,000 will be traveling by means such as bus, train, or possibly taking a cruise. Now, the top destinations for this holiday are Las Vegas, San Diego, the Central Coast, Mexico, and the Grand Canyon. We spoke with one group, though, who is traveling to Hawaii for a very special reason. I'm in a band called Common Kings, based out of Orange County. We're headed to Hawaii. Um, they're to actually perform for, this, for the troops out there in Kauai, and then um, off to a charity event in Oahu. We got hit up for, from some of our friends at the military, and... Um, you know, we just, you know, always, always look for ways to give back to the, you know, our people and anyone that are in the service, you know, so our way to support them as well. Now, if you are traveling here at LAX anytime over the next week or so, it's recommended to uh, check in online before you even come to the airport, pre-book your parking if that's possible, and then, of course, give yourself extra time. Reporting live here at LAX, I'm Aaron Myers. I'll send it back to you both in Hollywood. All right, Aaron, thank you for that. There's a bit of uh, relief for drivers looking to hit the road this holiday weekend. Gas prices nationwide are down significantly compared to this time last year. According to AAA, the national average for regular gas sits at $3.54 a gallon. That's uh, more than a dollar less than last year's average, although still more expensive than our state average. Here in Los Angeles, the average price for regular unleaded, $4.89 a gallon. This time last year, it was $6.33. In Orange County, it's four dollars and eighty-two cents. That's a dollar forty-two cheaper than last year. In San Bernardino, it's four eighty, down from six twenty. Six dollars and thirty-one. As a summer hailstorm delayed the start of the Dodgers' run. Uh, during the worst of the storm, three-inch hail fell along with rain and winds of 70 miles an hour, according to the National Weather Service. Hail... That we've not only seen this entire spring, but look at that today. Well, look at the look at the time lapse on the weather, and then look at the tarp slide by Elias Diaz. That's awesome. You've got to challenge that slide. Yeah. And they must have called him safe because now he's pumped. The Diaz dance. Okay. That wild weather at Coors Field not stopping the players from having some fun. Rockies catcher uh, Elias Diaz was uh, spotted sliding over the soaked tarp before busting out some dance moves. <laughs> <laughs> the smiles quickly went away, uh -oh. though, as the Dodgers crushed the Rockies. Oh, boy. 14 Whoa. to 3. Whoa. Not so funny now, ah. big guy. Yeah, I don't want to say those white pants become see-through after too much Whoa, water, yeah. but they might. But it's amazing that with that weather, they actually managed to get a game in. Yeah. Yeah. At that point, yeah. I'd be going, you know, love folks, right. we're it. out. But uh, no, two hours, they got it in. And doing that slide and that, I mean, that was freezing rain and hail, so it's cold as anything, yet you know, he managed yeah, he to do that. He was having a good time. Having a good time. All right, clouds trying to clear out at the beaches, but uh, not happening too fast. 63, two degrees cooler than it was yesterday at this time and the relative humidity 84 percent heat excessive heat advisory 
and then we have an excessive heat warning just about encompassing all of Southern California the moment you get inland just a touch away from the uh, coastal areas it is going to be hot and then at the coastal areas it's going to be a little bit on the cool side overcast possibly even some light rain or drizzle just off the coast and a little bit of moisture right there you can see kicking up this is tomorrow morning at 335 in the morning it clears out quickly and then overnight Saturday into Sunday it does the exact same thing and it clears out pretty quickly on Sunday and warm temperatures for the inland areas these uh, numbers Lancaster Palmdale at 105 106 but uh, such as Newhall they'll probably be in the 100 degree mark same story for Van Nuys Woodland Hills 98 they're definitely going to be into the 100 degree mark over the weekend